Dr. Benita Rattan from the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. This channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. So as you know, skin of color is when you're more likely to tan rather than burn in the sun because it means that your melanocytes are large and they are easier to trigger. This means that for us, one scratch, one bite, one burn, and we hyperpigment. So we have to be very careful with our skin. Unfortunately, 90% of what's been made in terms of skincare hasn't really been made with skin of color in mind. And so this channel is about deciphering inky codes, so the ingredients list, and telling you whether or not it's worth purchasing something. It's also really important that you know that none of my channels have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored because I really want you to have an evidence-based resource for skin of color, not only for us, but also for our children. As they grow and their skin changes, they need to have a place to go to find out exactly what they should and shouldn't be doing for their skin and something that's not been endorsed um, so that they know they can trust the information that they're receiving. Right, so today's video has been requested and requested and requested. Uh, and this is mineral versus chemical sunscreen. What is a discrepancy? What does it mean for skin of color? Why is everybody saying different things? Um, and so, and really what is the truth? You know, which one should you be purchasing? So I thought, let me go through all the journals, and I literally have. I have trolled through journals and articles, and I will link them for you, and I'll screenshot them for you, just so that you can see both sides of the story, um, and you can come up with your own conclusion, and I will tell you what my personal conclusion is, but at least you have all the information and you can make an informed decision. So if that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, so first of all, what are publications? How does this all work? How do we come to a conclusion? So what would happen is, say somebody, um, a science group will conduct an experiment and they will write up that experiment. They'll talk about how many people the clinical trial was done on, what the, how it was measured, if there was any conflict of interest, etc. So this is all written up in an article. That article is not just published. It has to go through peer review before it's deemed good enough to publish. And so peer review is basically the strictest thing that we can do in order to assess the validity of a clinical study. And once it's gone through peer review and it's passed and it's published, it's basically considered the gold standard. It's cons we all then read from the same hymn sheet. And this is one way of making sure that we don't have people saying lots of different things and there's evidence behind what's being said. So it's very important for medicine and for science to function in this way. So let's go through uh, what has happened in terms of journals and physical versus chemical sunscreens. So starting off with the article in Photodermatology, Photoimmunology, um, Photomedicine Journal, it says physical sunscreens effectively block UV radiation by reflecting and scattering. So this is saying zinc oxide and titanium dioxide reflects UV. The next journal says the Journal of Clinical Anesthetic Dermatology says chemical sunscreens absorb high energy UV, physical blockers reflect and scatter light. So this is the same thing everyone's been saying, is that chemical sunscreen absorbs, physical sunscreen reflects. The next journal says uh, chemical filters absorb photons of UV radiation promoting a change in its chemical structure. Physical filters promote reflection of UV rays. So exactly the same thing. Chemical sunscreens absorb, physical sunscreens reflect. Okay, so we've all been saying the same thing. Okay, so next it's really important to understand what exactly is UVA and what exactly is UVB. So 290 nm to 320 nm is your UVB. Now remember UVB, B stands for burning. So in that bracket of UV, your skin burns. Now from 320 nm to 400 nm, 
that is UVA. That's the, those are the rays that lead to aging of the skin. They tend to penetrate deeper into the skin. So newer studies have come out to say that only five to 10% of up to 370 nm is reflected by physical sunscreen and the rest is absorbed. And then after 370 nm, up to 400 nm, and the whole of the visible light spectrum, is mainly reflected rather than absorbed. So this is actually a bit of a revelation because we've always said the physical sunscreen will reflect the whole of the UV spectrum and the visible light spectrum when this isn't actually the case. We are absorbing majority of it up to 370 nm, then 370 to 400 which is part of the UVA spectrum and the visible light spectrum is being reflected. Now if you were just to look at that science you'd say oh actually you know what you can wear what you want you know it's basically you know there's not much difference where I come from a different perspective is I come from a clinical setting and so for me it's not enough just to look at the ingredients I need to see how that is impacting the skin and if it has any impact at all and so don't forget because in my clinic um, if you follow me at the hyperpigmentation clinic on Instagram I've treated over 40,000 cases of pigmentation for skin of color that's the largest database in the world and one thing that I've seen is that those people who tend to wear physical sunscreens tend to get better results than those who wear chemical sunscreens and I was thinking about this, why is this the case? And it could be for a number of reasons. I think number one, I think we underestimate just how important that part of UVA spectrum is for melasma. And don't forget visible light also leads to melasma. So any form of energy on the skin leads to pigmentation and worsening of pigmentation. If you have melasma as it is, it's so hard to treat, you almost need to do everything in your power to help yourself. And so if you have melasma, I will always still recommend physical sunscreen to you. And me, myself, I get melasma, this is why I wear physical sunscreen. In fact, not only do I wear just physical sunscreen, I also wear a physical barrier, my Dr. V sunglasses, on top, uh, in order to help myself as much as possible. A few other things to note is that zinc oxide is an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. It's also a fantastic ingredient to use if you have any impairment of the barrier. So any inflammatory conditions such as eczema should really be wearing zinc oxide for this reason too. In addition, a clinical study has been done at the FDA and they have concluded that chemical sunscreen reaches our bloodstream faster than they originally thought. Within three days, it's actually accumulated in your bloodstream. You'll find it in your urine and in your breast milk. And they themselves have said that they need to do further testing to see if this has any long-term damage because don't forget, with sunscreen, you never stop wearing it. You wear it every single day for years. This is a pretty fundamental study that I believe needs to be done quite rapidly considering just how many people use chemical sunscreen. And I certainly would say if you're pregnant or lactating, then it's definitely not a good idea to be wearing chemical sunscreen for this reason. And it's not something I would ever put on my children. I would wear, I put physical sunscreen on them. I do recommend you go and watch my um, sunscreen, which sunscreen I would advise for children, because a lot of sunscreens on the market are not ideal for children. Even if they've got kids in bubble writing, it doesn't mean anything. So based on the information that we know so far, I would still always say wear physical over chemical, especially if hyperpigmentation is one of your issues, uh, especially if you have melasma, um, for the face because this is the area that UV is going to be hitting the most um, or if you have any inflammatory conditions such as eczema such as PIH from acne um, I'd also say for children physical is better and if you're pregnant there's still so much we don't know and I think this is very important point to bring up in this video there are only so many clinical studies that have been done and so we almost need to extract information from those few clinical studies and what it would mean for the general public because it's not every single clinical study in the world has ever been conducted. I mean, just even looking at skin of color, I, I'm the only one that's ever conducted trials of specific ingredient percentages that are good for skin of color. You know, and this, is, this feels very basic information. You should always caveat by saying, based on what we know right now, 
I would choose physical over chemical for my own skin as I get melasma myself and I would recommend that you do the same. But I really wanted to give you all the information in one video so that you can make your own decision and you can also see where the discrepancy is happening. Why is it that one person is saying one thing and Dr. V you're saying another thing and someone else is saying something else? This is the reason why. And now you are empowered and educated and can make your own decision as to what you want for your skin. Don't forget to download your free guide. The link is below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic and Skincare by Dr. V. I ask you so many questions about what you want on this YouTube channel. So please do follow me and get your voice heard. And if you've got anything else you want me to do for you, please write it down below. I'm in the comment section for one hour of the launch of every single video. Thank you very much.